This, of course, is what is happening in Brazil, where people across Brazil are now turning up at the polling stations to cast their vote in the second and the final runoff of the presidential polls. Incumbent President Jair Bolsonaro has also cast his vote in what is being described as the country's most polarized election in many years. Now, this election, of course, pits the incumbent far-right President Jair Bolsonaro against the left-wing rival Luis Inácio Lula da Silva. Now, according to the recent polls, it's being predicted that Lula is, in fact, the candidate who has his nose in the front. Now, a recently conducted survey showed that Lula da Silva had about 52% of the people backing him, while Bolsonaro had the support of about 48% of the voters. However, polling ahead of the first round un had underestimated the vote base of the incumbent president, Jair Bolsonaro. And experts are now suggesting that this election, despite the fact that Lula da Silva may appear to have his nose in the front, could actually end up going either way because it is way too hard to predict as to who may actually end up in the vote today. É uma disputa que provavelmente vai se definir amanhã, ou seja, existe aí um equilíbrio na reta final, porque nós temos aí a questão das abstenções, que pode prejudicar um grupo ou outro, nós temos aí a mobilização que vai acontecer ainda de última hora. And also Lula da Silva held a rally in Sao Paulo before the runoff elections today. The presidential frontrunner paraded on top of vehicle along with Sao Paulo's governor Camden. And also at a news conference before the rally, Lula had said that the conditions were in fact right for him to in fact storm to a victory and emphasized as to how he was not worried about Bolsonaro refusing to hand him the presidential sash. Nós só temos um caso do presidente Figueiredo que não quis passar a faixa para o presidente Sarney. Mas isso é de menos. Eu, se for necessário, recebo a faixa do povo brasileiro. Meanwhile, Brazil's incumbent president, Jair Bolsonaro, before the runoff of ballot, wearing Brazil's national soccer team t-shirt, Bolsonaro arrived at the capital city where the cheering supporters, of course, received him with Brazilian flags. Meanwhile, the officials from Sao Paulo's electoral court also set up polling stations, have set up polling stations across the country with over 115,000 machines being expected to be a part of the election process today. The urna is completely safe, como é sempre reiterado em todas as entrevistas, ela não é conectada a nenhuma fonte de, de internet, né, nenhuma outra rede, e todos os sistemas são auditados e certificados. Então, a urna é completamente, tanto a urna quanto os sistemas de apuração são completamente seguros. E também para nos dar mais insights em termos de o que pode ser esperado nessas eleições cruciais que estão em curso no Brasil, nós estamos sendo convidados por Rafael Lloris, who is a political analyst and also a professor of Latin American history and politics at the University of Denver. Now, Professor Yoris, thank you very much indeed for taking time out and speaking to us here on Beyond. Now, this is being dubbed as the most polarized election in recent years in Brazil's history. Jair Bolsonaro, the man who's been in charge in Brazil, is now taking on Lula da Silva. The polls predict that Lula is marginally ahead. But do you think that prediction is likely to come through? Hello, thank you for having me. Uh, it's really unpredictable in the sense that uh, it, Bolsonaro seems to have uh, surged a little bit uh, uh, after the first round. Lula sort of managed to stop that surge in the last week. So the, his supporters are a little more excited now that uh, you know the, the winds are sort of in his favor. But uh, as you said, uh, in the first round, the polls were a little off. There are reasons for that. There were last-minute changes of some voters that were supporting additional candidates on the center-right. And uh, there also the fact that Bolsonaro did not provide the funds as president of the country in 2020 to, for the country to conduct its annual, its 10-year, right, uh, every 10-year census. 
So the uh, polling agencies are a little off in terms of how they can map the population to be able to do the, the surveys, the polls. So uh, again, it seems that Lula is, is, is ahead. Uh, you know, all the polls indicate that, but uh, it's going to be an uh, election decided today. And as you said, also, it's, it's a very, very important election that will, will uh, give the, the, you know, the path for the country for, for the next four years at least. And the choices are very, very different, you know, the, which path the country wants to follow. Absolutely indeed. Now, for people who are watching this election from outside of Brazil, you know, Professor, try and help us understand what are the key issues on basis of which people in Brazil are actually be going to vote today to elect their next president? Sure. Uh, well, uh, again, the economy always matters. Uh, Brazil is a developing economy similar to India's economy. So uh, economy is always, the economic situation always matters a lot. And there seems to be sort of a class divide, not exactly, you know, perfect one, but in the sense that Lula has a lot of supporters from the poorest region of the country, the Northeast, and a lot of the working class. But there are working class, were, you know, people that support Bolsonaro as well. One of the things that Bolsonaro managed to do uh, when he first was elected in 2018 is to bring new issues in addition to the economic dimension, more ideological issues, uh, divides in terms of religion and values of the family, uh, along with very conservative lines. Uh, Bolsonaro is, is an uh, extreme right-wing candidate, someone who's very aligned with, the, you know, what Trump represented in the United States. So his campaign once again has revived this cultural divides in terms of trying to pre uh, present himself as a conservative uh, and trying to portray Lula as an extreme uh, leftist, which is not the case. Lula is, is, a, is a very moderate politician who has served as president already. But uh, those ideological divides are also uh, factors in this election. So we'll see what happens. The economy in Brazil is not doing great. It, it sort of got better a little bit in the last few months, but unemployment is still high. There's a lot of poverty. So that uh, seems to help Lula, and Bolsonaro seems to be appealing more to the, you know, the, those conservative values and cultural issues in terms to rally his base. Absolutely, indeed. Now, for people who are watching this election from outside of Brazil, you know, one of the key factors which, which a lot of people talk about when it comes to Brazil is the destruction of the Amazonian rainforest. Over the course of the last four years, what we witnessed, you know, those wildfires that got reported so much, it actually is, is something that was pursued as a matter of state policy under Jair Bolsonaro, who was letting these farmers and ranchers to burn those forests, to clear the land, so that that land could be brought under agriculture or for the purpose of ranching. You know, the question that I want to ask you is, how much of an issue is the destruction of the Amazon rainforest within Brazil? It is an issue, but I would say it's more an issue on the side of Lula supporters, uh, who are, uh, many of them, of course, have a more sort of a clear uh, environmental position in defense of the Amazon and environmental issues, and also indigenous populations who live in the Amazon, their rights. <laughs> Bolsonaro has a very strong support among the agribusiness uh, industry in Brazil, which is in the center part of the country in the border region with the Amazon, and they have been pushing that frontier into the Amazon for the for you know several years now, and Bolsonaro managed to uh, run an administration that really favors their business, and in that sense uh, continues to to voice this appeal for you know continue to open land for agriculture and and cattle raising in the country. So uh, he needs to continue to to promote that view, uh, and also on the cultural issues, he's, he rallies around the idea that uh, indigenous rights of peoples of the Amazon are you know it's a small minority of people that we need to think of the majority, the ruling majority of the country. So so. It, it also brings a little bit of that cultural point, but mostly is is about uh, uh, trying to rally supporters among the agribusiness industry. Uh, Lula's uh, supporters, of course, uh, uh, tend to be more uh, not only, but you know, environmentalists are behind him, right. and also uh, many people outside the country. So in many ways, uh, it, it's more of an issue for the international audience than I would say the debates in Brazil between the candidates. Absolutely, indeed. This is this, of course, is an election that we'll be tracking very closely, indeed. Thank you very much, indeed, Professor Yoris, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.